Lawnmower Man begins with a grim warning about the dangers of virtual reality. And if people in the 90s knew that we'd one day be able to make VR glasses out of a cardboard box, they'd probably shit in their hammer pants. Which would be unfortunate because the feces would just kind of like pool at the bottom. Ugh, trying to dance around and poop just sloshing back and forth? Gross. Pierce Brosnan plays Dr. Angelo, who's running an experiment called Project 5 at Virtual Space Industries. VSI is trying to enhance the brain power of chimpanzees by injecting them with psychoactive drugs and having them fight monsters in VR simulations. Dr. Angelo wants to use these treatments to help cure all sorts of degenerative brain diseases, but the shop, which is the evil corporation that owns VSI, wants to use the experiments to turn the chimps into super soldiers. Now, I know nothing about chimps, but what? Also, I think they're overlooking a huge money-making opportunity here. You know how much money people would pay to play, like, Call of Duty against a monkey? It'd be so adorable. The monkey would have his little headset on, and he'd be, oh, my producer is frantically trying to get my attention. And, oh, I'm sorry. Apparently chimps are apes, not monkeys. Well, excuse the f*** out of me, Daryl. Dr. Angelo is upset because the shop wants to increase the dosage of aggression drugs that they're giving the chimps. And do you really need to inject a chimp with any aggression drugs? Like, aren't they already aggressive? Wasn't it a chimp that ripped off that lady's face? Also, they're training them to shoot random pixelated enemies. I mean, these things don't even remotely resemble a human, so I don't know how the chimp is going to identify a threat on the battlefield. And also, why does it have to go upside down? Everything about this just seems so arbitrary. The monkey breaks free from his cage and goes on a killing spree within VSI, and they should have just abandoned the whole lawnmower man thing and just given us 90 minutes of Pierce Brosnan trying to stop this monkey as he just gets smarter and more bloodthirsty. Although the seriousness of the situation is kind of undercut by the constant chimpanzee hoots and grunts. <laughs> Adorable. You know, some people die in their sleep, some die performing a heroic final act, but, like, think of how much it would suck to be one of those guards. Oh, I was so sad to hear about Kevin's passing. How did he die? Oh, he got shot by a monkey at work. What? A monkey shot him? Yeah. And that's not even the worst part. Apparently the monkey stole Kevin's gun and then shot him with his own gun. Oh my god, that sucks. Oh, his poor wife and kids. I know. Poor son of a bitch. And you know, VSI seems like a pretty understanding company because the only punishment Dr. Angelo receives is a paid leave of absence. So with newfound free time on his hands, Dr. Angelo decides to continue his research on a human subject. And he chooses the lovable, mentally challenged lawnmower man named Job. Job is pretty much owned by the McKean brothers. He works for the good-hearted, alcoholic Terry McKean and lives with the abusive monster Father McKean. Job is also good with machines, and he builds Big Red, a lawnmower that looks unwieldy as hell. Look at that thing. Looks like he has to really fight that thing even on the straightaways. All right, all done mowing. Now to spend three hours picking up grass clippings. Do you like to play games? Yeah. Well, I have a game in my house that you might like to play. Would you like that? Yeah. I have other different games. Can you keep a secret? Um, what's going on here? Hold on, let me fast forward this movie a bit. Okay guys, good news. Dr. Angelo does not molest Job. He merely injects Job with drugs and uses him as an unwitting test subject in a dangerous and experimental procedure that ultimately breaks Job's brain and causes numerous deaths. <laughs> that seemed like I was going towards a pretty dark place. And the testing in question seems to merely consist of injecting Job with drugs and flashing images really fast at him. And this somehow increases Job's brain power at an accelerated rate. Dr. Angelo gets permission to continue his research at his former lab. You know, the lab that made him take a leave of absence because his monkey went on a murderous rampage. Does the shop not realize that as a human, Job is like five monkeys put together? At VSI, Dr. Angelo has access to the one component that his basement lab was missing. The ability to make the subject spin upside down. And everyone knows that going upside down is the key to unlocking the full power of VR. The treatments allow Job to gain new abilities like hearing people's thoughts and the ability to have sex with the local widow, Marnie. And as all gamers can attest to, the ladies love a man who plays virtual reality simulators. Pressured by the director of the shop to make this new experiment more like Project 5, Tim's changes the program and replaces the drugs with the aggression factor serum, and I'm not sure why. They are only doing that with the chimps so that they could turn them into disposable soldiers so that humans wouldn't have to die on the battlefield. So what, you're gonna spend months and millions of dollars to turn one human into the smartest person alive, and the only thing you can think to do with him after that is inject him with anger drugs so he can be a mindless killing machine? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, and it is 100% something our government would do. 
Job then develops telekinesis and mind control powers. All standard virtual reality side effects. And you know, just because you can control a lawnmower with your mind doesn't always mean that you should. Like he's all over the place. That yard is going to look like shit. And I have the same issue with the remote controlled lawnmower and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Sure, it sounds awesome, but depending on how big your lawn is, you're not going to be able to mow in anything even remotely resembling a straight line. Manual lawnmower technology is here to stay. Job sneaks Marty into VSI, and he's able to do that because I'm guessing they haven't replaced all the guards that the chimp killed in the beginning of the movie. And he and Marnie hook into the simulator and have virtual sex until Job turns into some sort of virtual copulation demon and virtually ejaculates and virtually and literally breaks Marnie's brain. All in all, probably not her weirdest Friday night. Job is so distraught that he injects himself with all the Project 5 drugs, and he's so hopped up on monkey rage juice that he goes on a murder spree around town. First victim is depraved pervert Father McKean, whom Job sets on fire with his mind. Now, I'm not sure why the fire looks like that. Like, is that a computer program of fire that Job created, or did the special effects just suck so bad that they couldn't make the fire look even remotely real? Also, if it is just a computer program, how is it burning him? Job's next victim is the mean gas station attendant, and Job proceeds to lawnmower a man his brain virtually in real life. Job then gets revenge on his neighbor Peter's abusive piece of shit father, but this time he decides to lawnmower a man his whole body, but with a real lawnmower this time. And Job decides that the next inevitable leap in his evolution is to become pure energy and control things in the virtual world. I, mean, I don't know why, it seems like he can control things pretty easily in the real world. And the shop sends his goons to Dr. Angelo's house to stop Job, and so Job projects a hologram of his own head onto the lawn, and then proceeds to turn the shop agents into thousands of tiny balls. Like, is this movie suggesting that reality is just another layer of VR? Because otherwise, Job shouldn't be able to do half of this stuff. Peter's mom allows her young son to go into the neighbor's house at night, and Peter finds Dr. Angelo tied up in his basement. So Dr. Angelo, Peter, and Peter's mom race to VSI in order to stop Job. I'm not sure what possible help Peter and his mom would be. Also, what kind of a mother takes her son with her to go stop a deranged supervillain? Job gets into the VR machine and is able to send his essence into the simulation, leaving behind a shriveled husk. Basically, the 90s thought that virtual reality was magic. Someone's hacking the mainframe from the outside. They're in, and they're running a computer virus that's placing triple key encryption codes on all outside access and network connections. What the f*** does that mean? Oh, absolutely nothing. It is 90s computer gibberish. Dr. Angelo cuts off the network to the outside world and basically has Job trapped. Although, if Job still had a body, he could just walk out the front door. Just saying. Seems like he was way more powerful before. And that should be the end of it, but Angelo decides to set up explosives all over VSI with a ridiculously short 15-minute time limit, and then straps himself into the VR machine to tell Job that Job's plan didn't work. Hey there, Job. I'm here to tell you that the jig is up, boy -o. You can't be hurting people the way you've been. You're coming across as a wee bit of a shite. This impression has actually gotten so much worse. And I'm sorry, but Pierce Brosnan's accent is far too difficult. Not quite Irish, not quite British. I even hired a dialect coach to help me out. But in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have chosen a coach named Seamus. He was just far too Irish. So Job was... virtually... powerless, but since Dr. Angelo hooked in the machine, Job can continue to torture him. And to top it all off, Peter gets lost inside VSI because his mom fell asleep. Man, she is like Tanning Mom, Balloon Boy's parents, and Lindsay Lohan's dad all rolled into one, am I right? Uh, what's that? My references are not outdated. You know what is outdated, though? Kate Goslin's hairstyle. <laughs> you just got brought down a peg or two, Kate, from John and Kate Plus 8. This universe is mine. I am God here. I have the unlimited power that only a computer program written in the 90s can provide. Job finds out that Peter is trapped inside the building and he decides he doesn't want any more death, and so he lets Dr. Angelo go to save him before the bombs go off. And the bombs start to go off, and at the last possible second, Job manages to pipe into the main firewall and reroute the T1 line through a binary node into the DARPANET comm channel in order to find a backdoor through the central hub firewall. It is some sick hacking. So Dr. Angelo is back at home and he's taking his work underground when Job sets his evil plan into motion by... making all of the phones ring.
Now, it has been so long since I've had a landline phone in my house that I'm having a difficult time figuring out what this would accomplish. I mean, is he calling to try to enter their computers through the phone line? Because I'm pretty sure at this point in time, if the phone rang, it would kick you off AOL. So I think Job may be screwed. But I'm sure Lawnmower Man 2 will explain everything. Oh my god, there actually is a Lawnmower Man 2. <laughs> I was just joking. All right, so they actually continued the story. Okay, I'm not sure I'll ever get to that one. <laughs> 